Welcome everybody to Emerge Online. Happy to have you guys back with us again. This is week something. Five. <laughs> week five. Nice. That's exciting. So that means it took us four weeks to get through uh, through James one. That's fun. We're slow reader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. There's so much uh, good stuff packed in there. You know, if you haven't uh, watched any of the previous videos, go back, check them out. There's a lot of good stuff. But uh, with that said, Matt, Carla, how are you guys doing today? Decently all right. You doing well. <laughs> Nice. That's good. Uh, I recently read that, you know, you're supposed to drink a lot of water um, and I've started drinking a lot more water. It's just coffee flavored water. So, you know, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. There's water in there. Yeah, there's some. It's mixed in there with all the, the other stuff. It's good. So, uh, Matt, Carly, do you guys want to tell us uh, what we're going to be talking about today? Uh, we're reading, starting James 2 this week, um, verses 1 to 13, and it's um, about, like, prejudice and favoritism. Nice. So if you haven't read it yet, uh, we're going to pause for a second, and then back. Now go, uh, yeah, go read it. It's good. Um, yeah, so kind of uh, the main piece that comes out is a lot of showing favoritism, right? Yeah. And you know, because you just read it. Awesome. Good job. Uh, so I guess our question that we're going to kick off with is, what do we gain from showing favoritism? Matt, Carla, what are your thoughts? Okay. Um, so I have written, um, on the outside, um, I think most of our minds, my mind goes anyway to like um, social status and gaining acceptance from others. I think it has a lot to do with like peer pressure um, in in a setting where you're kind of faced with oh do I show favoritism or not um, it's usually because there's other people around I think we're a little bit more clear-headed if we're alone um, but when there's other people it just gets us um, so but in in James 2 the beginning of it um, God is telling us here that we should be a little more concerned with what's going on in the inside um, which really is separation from God in verse 9 it's um, Says, but if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. Um, so that's a pretty big responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not always on the forefront of our minds when we're in a social group, um, in a predicament, I guess, where we're um, challenged with showing favoritism. Um, and I think showing favoritism in the spectrum of sins seems quite small, like, you know, telling a lie or showing favoritism don't seem as big as like murdering someone or committing adultery. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the big, the big ones. Right. Yeah. Um, but God in verse 10, 10 and 11, um, you can read those, um, says that we're just as guilty and it's still a sin. There's, um, and we've still broken the law. And then verse 12, um, continues to go on to, to say that, um, that that's what we're going to be judged by. Um, so I'll lighten that up a little bit more in my, next answer but yeah nice yeah i like that point too because uh like you mentioned uh, those verses uh the way the message puts it is do you think your non-adultery will cancel out your murder and you know, just because you didn't like murder somebody does that mean that like you're showing favoritism doesn't matter that much it's it's all mm -hmm. still the same mm -hmm. uh, matt yeah um i just have a few notes on it uh i think um Showing favoritism, you can you can kind of gain momentary fame, is, is one of the words I have for it, and and, and kind of a high from it. Uh, but it's all it's all fleeting, it's all momentary. Um, and uh, uh, in James, it talks about God uh, um, choosing the poor of this world to be rich in faith. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and and you know when when you're on that track that that you want to be rich or you want to be famous that's probably not something that's on your mind is is being rich in faith or or uh, uh having that integrity um but uh that's really all that matters in the end right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. i know uh say that again i just said that's all i had for it nice yeah, i know when uh when i was playing in bands and stuff it, it was always like this there's this level of you gotta like know the right people you want to get to the next level of like you know, building your, your stuff. And, uh, I think that's what a lot of, uh, that's what we see a lot through this idea of uh, showing favoritism. It's like a lot of times we're, we're looking to build our own selves up. We're, we're looking to improve our own kingdom. If that's a, a good way of putting it. 
Um, but it, it is really fleeting. Absolutely. Um, I remember when I was, uh, I was in elementary, I had to be, but there was this, uh, there's one girl in my class and she came up and she told me, Hey Ryan, if you stopped hanging out with those two friends of yours, I think all the other kids would think you were a lot cooler. I'm like, Oh, so that's all it takes. <laughs> and so like that afternoon I didn't play with them at recess. And then I was like, no, this is stupid. I like my friends. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those weird things, but I think on a, a very base level, I think we believe uh, that we increase or decrease uh, our value based on who we spend time with. Um, our values, uh, we believe the idea that our value is born out of uh, social standing. You know, we, we often look around at other people and we kind of base ourselves like, oh, I'm not as, as weird as that person or bad as that person, but I'm not as cool as that person. So I'm like, yeah, we're always measuring ourselves against each other. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's really kind of a, a false motive of self-evaluation. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that every single one of us feels insecure to, to varying degrees, but we all have this deep level of insecurity. And so we're always looking to, to fill that, to, to build ourselves up, to make ourselves into more than what we feel we are. Um, there's a big movement in our world today to like, you know, be happy with who you are. I think there's a level where when we can find happiness in who we are, there, it, it's a good thing, but it depends on what we're, we're building that out of. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and there was this quote that, uh, that stood out to me. I can't remember who said it and who they were quoting, but it's, it's a thing. So good. Um, but the, the quote was the person knocking on the door of a brothel is looking for God. Um, and, and the elaboration on it goes, you know, as we go through life, you know, the best and the worst of us, we're all looking for, for something. We all have this God shaped hole inside. I think a lot of us try to fill that with, uh, with social standing, with, uh, with experience, with, uh, you know, in the case of the quote, you know, with sex or with different uh, connections. Um, and the problem is we, we're trying to fill a hole in ourselves that can't be filled by all these things that we're trying to like dump into it. Um, on the flip side, when we truly know who we are, and this comes back to the idea of, you know, when we can find uh, we can find happiness and peace and joy when we within ourselves, but it's it's uh, it's based out of not trying to scrounge up out of our own insignificance. It's found out of recognizing who we truly are, because when you and I realize that we are children of God, that this like Creator of the universe loved us so much that He would send His Son to die for us, and that this Creator Creator of the universe looked at the world and said, you know what, right now it needs a mat. Right now, it needs a Carla, and, and he puts each of us into this place in this time. I think uh, it, changes, it changes how we see ourselves, and it changes how we see people around us. Um, but we can jump into that a little bit more in a few minutes. But um, yeah, I guess question number two is, how can we avoid showing favoritism? Because we, we all have this built into us where we, we measure ourselves against each other. Um, and we try to always improve ourselves. So how can we avoid showing favoritism? Uh, yeah, the, the very first verse in uh, chapter two says, my brothers and sisters uh, that believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. It's not like you probably shouldn't do it. It's like, don't do it. So how can we, how can we work on this thing that's very hardwired into all of us? Matt, Carla, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, so first, I'm just going to read a little little portion here uh, that I wrote out. Um, <clears throat> somebody said, everyone struggles and goes through hard times. Uh, we are created uniquely in God's image, uh, but everyone can relate with the trials on this earth. So I believe we are kidding ourselves when we think we are above somebody else. Mm -hmm. so you may be better off financially, uh, but our monetary gain doesn't help the, the pain when a family member dies or you lose your job or et cetera. Um, but I think a person's faith and integrity are what uh, strengthens you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in the answer part of it, um, I think we should just continually be, be checking ourselves. Um, 
um, and, and taking our words to God's word and, and seeing if they line up. Um, um, because he has a he has a perfect plan for our lives, um, and uh, sorry, I'm just losing track here. Um, no, it's all good. Um, but yeah, we aren't going to get there by climbing over others to achieve our goals. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, to to avoid the favoritism, you you have to be uh, you have to be honest with yourself and 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 humility goes a long way. But the biggest thing I think is, is uh, looking at God's word and what he says. Absolutely. That's good. Carla, what are your thoughts on this? And then I had, um, I think it comes like, I guess it ties in with Matt too, is it comes from the heart. Um, it is a fleshly desire to want to please people. And we're probably almost always being tempted to, to do that. Um, so the more we align ourselves with God, um, we see that we're all just people and God says um, that we're all equal. Galatians 3.28 um, talks about that. Um, so yeah, like when God sees us, he doesn't see favoritism. He doesn't see all the achievements and stuff we've done, but he, he looks at our hearts. He sees the condition of our hearts and not so much our outside circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and then my last answer ended off on like um, us being judged and stuff. And so then verse 13 um, goes on to say, there will, there will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Um, and so I think just reminding ourselves who we are in God's, like in God's eyes, um, and we're no better off than, than, I don't know, anyone else, but whether they're rich or poor. Um, so I think it's, yeah, about understanding God's mercy, um, that he's had on us. Um, and when we truly see our place and how sinful we are, we can begin to live in gratitude of God's mercy on ourselves. Um, and we see less and less the differences, um, between us and other people and other people and other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's good. Yeah. I like, uh, I like the way the. I keep going back to it, but the way the message puts this, they say, uh, kind mercy wins over harsh judgment every time. You know, it's, there is a level where we got to be, we got to take into account that our actions do, do matter. And the way we treat people, it matters. It matters a lot to God because um, me and my wife, we just went through a book. That's a lie. We went through a short devotional on like the Bible app. Um, but one of the things they, they hit hard was the idea that, your spouse is, uh, is a child, a son or daughter of God, you know, and the way that we, we see our spouse matters a lot. And they, they point to the idea that um, if you looked at your spouse as like the child of God, it's going to change the way you treat them. You know, think about if you have kids, the way that you treat your own kids. And if anybody came like was rude or nasty to your kid, you're like, <laughs> we go and fight, son. You know, and uh, God loves loves the people around us with like this this deep fatherly love. Uh, and when we when we treat his kids as lower, it's like oh, that's it's not good news. Um, so yeah, I think uh, for me, one of the big things with like this idea of curbing or, or changing and avoiding showing favoritism is is based in verse eight where it says if you really keep the royal law found in the scriptures which is love your neighbor as yourself then you're doing right and i think a lot of times when we let uh, when we let ourselves become the most important thing in our life it's really easy to put other people lower than us we're not loving each other the way we should we're not caring for people the way we should um we we put ourselves as the most important thing and then everything else kind of goes out the door. Um, but God calls us to, to honor other people above ourselves, to love people the way that we love ourselves, to treat people the way we want to be treated. And if we would look at people with, well, putting ourselves in their shoes, putting ourselves in their place so we can not just focus on what we want, but what's, what's better for the other person. Uh, I love saying the idea that if everybody looked out for each other, everybody gets taken care of. When everybody looks out for themselves, people get left behind, people get hurt, people get damaged, and it doesn't work well. Um, yeah, I think uh, when when we see people the way God sees them, it changes everything. And it goes back to what we talked about 
for, for a couple of weeks, but this idea of our perception matters. You know, if we see people as a way to get ahead for ourselves, we're going to treat them poorly. If we see people as like children that, that God gave his life for, that God died for, that you know, Jesus died on the cross for, it's going to change how we see and value people. So I think the, the big shift in all this comes in, in the way we look at people. But uh, that's good stuff. Do you guys have any, uh, any closing thoughts? Any, uh, anything else you wanted to share? I was just gonna uh, just kind of agree on what you were saying there, Ryan. I, I like the the point about um, you know not using others to to or like stepping on others to to get to the success that you want. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, God could take that away instantly, right? Oh yeah, you could be um, you could be flying high and then and then right down low in an instant. But uh, there was a, another thing I had wrote down here quick. Uh, um, I think. I think that sometimes God lets uh, people have success and fame to to eventually teach them a lesson, mm -hmm. uh, or, or to, to you know, because every everyone's different, right? And and we Absolutely. learn in different ways. So it doesn't make you <clears throat> an inherently evil person if you're, um, uh, you know, if you're if you're at a point in your life where you're trying to get success or fame, but um, but God wants to you know try and get you to the point where where you he sees the, or you can see the real path that he has for you, right? And, mm -hmm. and that definitely doesn't come through uh, climbing over others, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, there's a verse that says, you know, God resists the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. You know, I think uh, there's a, a big piece, and it's kind of, it seems backwards in our world today, because, you know, if you want to get ahead, you got to promote, you got to make yourself like this marketable thing, you got to make yourself the, the top notch, the best, whatever. Um, but God, God's not necessarily looking for the best. You know, you, if you look through the scriptures, you see time and time again, where you use guys like Gideon, who was just like a dude that was like the lowest of the low in his tribe. You know, he used people that were, you know, even King David was like the youngest of all his brothers. And like the prophet was like, yeah, that's gotta be this guy, this guy, this guy, they're all tall, handsome, well-adjusted dudes. And God's like, no, I want the, I want David. He's the, the youngest. He's got it. Um, I think, there's something powerful in, in humility that we don't always embrace. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I think we've got lots, uh, lots covered this week, lots for you guys to think about. Um, thank you, Matt and Carla, for joining with us, and we will see you guys next time. You bet. See you. All right. See you. Take care.